hello guys welcome back to my channel on today's tutorial i will cut and sew the 12 pieces blouse with a short color detail which i drafted in a previous tutorial on my fabric the link for the pattern drafting tutorial will be above and in the description box below hi my name is ayo and welcome to 011 clothing tutorials on this channel i upload diys pattern drafting and sewing tutorials if you haven't subscribed yet kindly do so and do not forget to turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video so now let's get right into the tutorial thank you so now i've gone ahead to call all the pattern pieces on my main fabric and lining this is the cap sleeve pattern and i cut four pieces of this on my fabric the tutorial for this will be above and in the description box below i use half an inch seam allowance all through what i'm doing now is just marking the wrong side of the fabric with my tailor's chalk this is the center front piece I cut two pieces of this on my African print fabric. I use half an inch seam allowance all through. So I cut two pieces on the African print fabric and two pieces on the red fabric which I'm using for the facing. I've already interfaced the two pieces and I've also padded the bust area. This is the second front piece. I use half an inch seam allowance all through. I cut two pieces on my African print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric, which I've already interfaced and padded the bust area. So, what I'm doing now is just labeling the pieces and I'm writing 2F on the wrong side of the pieces so as to avoid confusion while joining the pieces together. This is the third front piece. I use half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seam where I use 1.5 inches side seam allowance. I cut two pieces on the African print fabric which is my main fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric which I've already interfaced as you can see. I will write 3F on the wrong side of all the pieces so as to avoid confusion later on while sewing. This is the center back piece. I used half an inch seam allowance all through. I cut two pieces on my African print, print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric. I will write one B, which, is, which signifies one back, the first back, on the wrong side of all the pieces so as to avoid confusion while joining the pieces together. This is the second back piece. I use half an inch seam allowance all through. What I'm doing now is notching the sides that will be joined together so as to avoid confusion, confusion while joining the pieces together. So I will write 2B on all the pieces. I cut two pieces on the African print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric. So I will write 2B on the wrong side of all the pieces. So as to avoid confusion while joining the pieces together. This 
this is the third part back piece i will not decide that will be joined to the second back pieces i use half an inch seam allowance all through except for the side seam where i use 1.5 inches side seam allowance i cut two pieces on the african print fabric and two pieces on the lining fabric I write 3B on the wrong side of all the pieces so as to avoid confusion while joining the pieces together. So I have here all the front pieces which I cut on the African print fabric. I will now go ahead and pin all the pieces together right side side before taking them to my sewing machine and stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. To know which side will be pinned to which side, make sure that all the pieces are labeled on the wrong side of the fabric and also most importantly notch the sides that will be joined together before removing the pattern, paper, the pattern paper pieces from the cutout fabric. This is exactly what I did, so as to avoid sewing the wrong pieces or the wrong sides together. So after joining, after pinning the pieces together, I will take it to my sewing machine and still choosing half an inch sewing allowance. So I should have two front pieces after joining all the panels together. There will be three panels for the front for the first front piece and another three panels for the second front piece, making a total of six, panel, six panels for the front. I will also go ahead and do the same thing for the for the lining pieces and the facing pieces as well. I will join all the pieces together. So now I've joined all the pieces together for both the main fabric and the lining as well. And I've also pressed the seam allowances open. I used half an inch seam allowance for the sewing. I will now move over to the back pieces. I will go ahead and pin all the pieces together, right side to right side. After which, I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance.
I will do the same thing for the lining pieces as well. So now that has been done, as you can see, I have six panels for the back piece. This is the lining. I also have six panels for the lining as well. Both the lining and the exterior pieces are the same length. This, is, this should not be so. So I will go ahead and trim off half an inch from the end of the lining for the back. And I've already marked out the half an inch that I'm going to trim off. So I'll go ahead and trim off the, the half an inch from the aim, like this. I'll do the same thing for the front lining pieces as well. I'll be making use of this stone decorative zipper to decorate the outer edges of the collar. So I'll go ahead and cut out the zipper to the exact sizes needed to decorate each edge of the row collar. So I will place the zipper at the edge of the row collar like this on the lining pieces for the front with the stone side facing down. I will pin in place. Note that the zipper seat is facing inwards that is towards the inner part of the collar. After pinning, I will go ahead and stick in place. So now that has been done as you can see. I will now go ahead and place the main fabric on top of the lining pieces like this, right sides together. I will pin in place, then I will take it to a sewing and stitch using half an inch sewing allowance. I will be stitching just the collar side alone. To make the whole process easier, you can make use of a zipper foot so that you can sew close to the edge of the zipper seat. So now that has been done, as you can see, I've already turned the two front pieces to the right side. Because, the de because of the decorative zipper, I couldn't bring out the pointed tips of the collar as I would have loved to. So you can keep adding the decorative detail if you want. So now, I will join the front pieces together, right side of the main fabric and the right side of the lining will be together. I will make sure that the seam lines of both the main fabric and the lining pieces are lined together. So I will stitch the aim using half an inch sewing allowance. I will leave one inch opening at the center front so that I can fix the zipper later on.
For the back, I replace the lining on top of the main or exterior fabric like this. Right sides will be together. And I will stitch the hem using half an inch sewing allowance. I've already ironed into facing to the hem of the lining piece, as you can see. And also the neckline, so as to stabilize it more. So now, I'll join the main fabric and the lining pieces together at the end for both the front and the back pieces. This is the back piece. I will now go ahead and join the side seams of both the exterior fabric and the lining fabric together. Right sides will be together. And I will use half an inch sewing allowance. But first, I will paint the two pieces together like this before taking it to my sewing machine to stitch in place. So now that has been done, as you can see. As for these two front pieces, the first thing I will do is to join the collar together at the center back. So I will open up the collar like this. And I will pin in place. I will make sure that the center back points match up, the same lines match up at the center back. And I will take it to my sewing machine and stitch in place using half an inch sewing allowance. Make sure that the center back seam lines match up, it's very important. So now that has been done, as you can see. I've joined these two front pieces together at the center back line. So what I intend to do now is to join the row collar to the neckline of the back piece. So I'll place the back piece on top of the front piece like this around the neckline of the front piece. I will match up the center back seam lines of both the collar and the back piece like this. I will paint in place from the center back down to the shoulder tip on both sides of the center back and the collar pieces. I will now go ahead and stitch in place from one end of the collar down to the neckline and down to the other shoulder tip. I will do the same thing for the lining as well. So what I'm basically doing is sewing lining to lining and fabric to fabric.
so now that has been done as you can see I'll join the back piece to the collar around the neckline area and also the shoulder I'll be fixing this decorative zipper to the center front of the blouse. I left one inch opening at the M at the center front on both sides. And I've already marked out the one inch zipper allowance on the center front. So I will fix the zipper to the exterior fabric only. Then I will turn the raw edges with the red facing fabric. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So now I'll fix the zipper as you can see. And I turn the raw edges using the red facing fabric. So this is what the inside of the of the of the of the blouse looks like after fixing the zip. You can see how neat it is. So what I'll do now is to go ahead and join the side seams of the lining and the main fabric together like this, just like I did for the back. I'll be using half an inch sewing allowance for this. So now that has been done as you can see. So what I'll do now is to mark out my bust measurements and my waist measurements on the blouse like this. So I'll be marking my bust measurements around the armhole area. I won't be making use of my hips measurement because the hem of the blouse should be flared and not fitted. So I will draw the guideline for the sewing like this. I will now go ahead and stitch in place following the guidelines that I already drew. So now that has been done, as you can see, I've joined the side seams together. I will now go ahead and fix the cap sleeves to the armhole of the blouse. So now that has been done, as you can see, I'll fix this, the cap sleeves to the armhole and I also embellish the front of the blouse using this, less, this red lace trimming, which I attach to the front of the blouse using my needle and thread. So that's it guys, we are done. 
If you find this video helpful, do not forget to comment, give it a thumbs up, share my videos, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next tutorial. Bye and thank you so much for watching.